Hey guys, I just wanted to make a quick video. So I see that, you know, you know, these predator loving kids, they they ride hard for predator loving um puss. You know what I'm saying? Um I mean, what did I call her predator loving puss? I think that's what they cause somebody had said something to me and was like, I don't understand how these weirdos like this is how weird that you know these barbs are. It's like how do you as a person even ride for somebody that's willing to try to silence victims and want to sue people because they gave, they gave a victim their platform? It, the, the coke allegations that Nikki's trying to sue Nosy Ho for is not why she's, she's suing. And she's not, she hasn't even served her yet, Nosy had said. Like, what? You really are mad because Jennifer Huff, Kenneth Petty, your husband's or baby daddy's victim, nosy ho gave her a platform so this is revenge but this is how dumb nikki is okay number one they love to say oh um cardi you know she talks about drugging men and robbing them okay well in nikki's song um miami and it's so disrespectful because i'm from i'm from you know miami and it's like bitch don't don't claim us and don't don't talk about us weirdo um literally I want to talk about Cardi said this, Cardi said that. Unlike, you know, Nicki Minaj, who basically denies, oh, I've never done drugs in my life. But in all of in her lyrics, she's talking about how she does drugs and Molly's this and Perth's that, even heroin. I was reading them like, are you serious? Like, you know, uh, like, because Nicki's the type of female, she's a liar. She's not credible. So we all seen across the years how much Nicki lies. So she flat out said, I don't do drugs. And all up in her fucking lyrics, drugs. And she said, my drug of choice, if you want to know, go to my lyrics. So she sent us to her lyrics. We didn't ask to be sent. She told us where to go to find what her drug of choice was. So, um, but first, let me go ahead and see, you know, let's see like what Nicki's activities and her songs consist of. She said... Um I got the low low on some perks, low low on some them zannies, but she don't do drugs. But she said she never done coke before. Do don't do drugs and then on video she's saying my drug of choice. Go look at it and look at it in the lyrics and all up and through the lyrics. Basically I I had it. I think it's the first verse. I flew in from Trinidad, peeped this nigga pressing. I think that he popped a molly, because look how he's stressing. I'm going to let my niggas rob him as soon as it's set in. None of you bum bitches can sit with me and Gretchen. So basically, Nikki said, I think that he popped a molly, because look how he's sweating. So she's taking a and then she said, I'm going I'm to let my niggas rob him as soon as it's set in. So when the molly sets in and when he's vulnerable and when he doesn't have um, any kind of recollection of what's going on after, after being on molly, Nikki says in her song, these are the her lyrics, she says, because she sends us to her lyrics to, so we can know which, what type of person she is. So she says, basically, you know, she talks about basically drugging and robbing a, t a man taking advantage of somebody that really is you know under the influence i'm gonna let my niggas rob him as soon as it's set in so the same things that the barb try to throw in cardi's face cardi willingly said certain things cardi's an open book but unlike Nicki minaj you know she's a liar so it's like you gotta really dig up the receipts and party gang when i was on twitter i wasn't even looking for this all i know is that somebody said something like that and they pulled up the receipts and i'm like what Baby, so your argument is null and void. Like, don't ever, ever come for Cardi about none of that shit because your fave literally talks about taking advantage of a dude, robbing him once the molly set in, like literally taking advantage of someone that is not in their full senses, okay? And yeah, so that's that. So that that's dead. And then the person I got, basically, the lyrics sent to me, and I'm like, what? I think that he popped the molly because look at how he's sweating. I'm going to let my niggas rob him as soon as it's set in. Yeah, like, yeah, she's she definitely is rapping about everything that y'all accusing Cardi of and saying. And I'm like, um, 
Well, Cardi, you know, she's an open book and I haven't seen when Cardi said that. I haven't watched the video, but I don't need to because whatever was said, Cardi basically, whatever she says, she stands on it. You know, she's not a liar. You know, lying about writers. Nikki got writers. Lotto said they use the same writers, but she denies having writers. And when Lotto popped at her, she never, ever denied it. She never addressed it. She never said, bitch, you a lie. I, I write. What you talking about? She never defended her pen, how she loves to talk about her pen. When Lotto cleared her and aired her out, she deleted all the tweets that she sent to Lotto and never, ever, ever addressed her Lotto saying that they all got the same writers. Lotto said, "Unlike you, I, I, we have writers, and we, do, and we, and and I admit it. I don't deny it like you. So the same way she hides her activity and tries to play like oh innocent, throws rocks, hide her hands, bitch. Look up all her lyrics. You know what I'm saying? Just drug filled all over, and even to the point where she's like, oh well, you know, I'm a robin when that when that Molly stay in." taking advantage of people under the influence so dead and all that don't you ever fix your mouth to come open don't ever fix your mouth to come for cardi when you're late when your fave is living a complete ugly ass lie her truth is so ugly it's deplorable it's disgusting no morals and it's these barbs they have no morals it's like it's all fun and games until your sister or your daughter walks into the petty's house and when she comes home crying to your little dumb ass that's when it's gonna set in oh my god this is real life. Rape is real life. Sexual assault is real life. That's nothing to be played with. Like, how could she sit up there and be with somebody like that? Okay? And if it's like you're going to, you know, be with him, why is she harassing or why is she like, you know, why is his victim saying that he's harassing her and she got a whole lawsuit? She got DNA rape kits. She got all the receipts ready to go to court. Why is it that, according to the victim, Jennifer Huff, why is it that Nikki would try to get on the phone and fly her out, according to Jennifer Huff, you know, to bribe her into recanting her story? I'm going to fly you and your family to L.A. Trying to get people to give her 20 bucks as if her vagina that was stolen from her is worth only 20000 Okay, why, why would y'all, I don't, I could never stand by nobody like that. That is a very d demonic human being. Somebody who defends their pedophile ass brother. Y'all are sick in the head. It's all fun and games until your little sister gets molested by a Kenneth Petty. Until your sister or your daughter gets molested or raped by um, a Kenneth Petty or her brother. Okay, they found her brother's DNA all up in that 12-year-old girl. So, like, it's all fun and games until your own people suffer in that way. That's when these little stupid-ass kids are going to wake up and realize, yo, not everything she does is right. They think Nikki's God, she could do no wrong. But the most wrong thing you can do is sit up there and literally condone, support, and defend somebody and lie for that person and manipulate and twist and try to silence a victim in defense of someone that, that literally harmed and traumatizes, harms and traumatizes women and minors. You know what I'm saying? Like Jennifer Huff was only 16 years old. They were the same age. Nikki was basically trying to say that they were in a relationship. Like when, when the, when it first hit the scene and that wasn't true. Jennifer Huff was never in a relationship, but she tried to make it seem like that way. Like it was consenting. When that man literally put something to her back, threatened her, and according to her, and according to also the, the transcripts, if you read them, he admitted to doing it. That's why he got the plea to get a lesser charge, okay? So that's why he, he's on the sex offender list for a reason. And it's, it's like these kids, they literally go so hard for this person. And I'm like, bro, y'all are sick. Y'all are really some sick-ass little kids. Y'all have no type of morals, none, none. And Nicki Minaj has no morals, and that's why... They're so obsessed with a pedophile, predator-loving bitch. They're obsessed. You know, they, they love it. But it's all fun and games until it's you or someone you love. Next case. Um, now, so that basically talks about that. Now, let's go to um, these lyrics. Okay, when she talks about Kokio, okay, she said in the High as a Kite, literally, High as a Kite is the name of the song. Um, where the, um, where the fuck is my nunchuck? I'm in Tokyo, yeah, with the Kokio, yeah, somebody slipping in my bed like Nokio. I'm getting ill, yeah, I've been popping a pill again. All she talks about is popping pills, pills and potions. I'm on an island and I'm looking for a gill again. Where my Timberland, I got him trembling. Can't find my keys, but I know I hear him jingling. You're such a Marilyn Monroe and Manson. 
I got some heroin. Want to go dancing? So, damn, you got coke and heroin, Nikki, according to your songs? You at the door? Okay, I'm about to come down. I'm getting numb now. Don't let me come now. Sniffing on some good blow. Anybody sniffing on good blow is basically uh, street terminology for coke, sniffing coke. That's basically street terminology. Blow is coke. Sniffing on good, some good blow. But she says she's never done cocaine in her life. And in her lyrics, she's telling you she pops pills. Um, you know, uh, what else? Uh, she even talks about heroin, talks about taking advantage of men when they on mollies and robbing them, you know, and sending people to do it the same way. They'd be like, Oh, Cardi sent a person to beat up girls. Well, Nikki wrote in her raps that she was, is going to send, send some niggas to take advantage of a dude that's on Molly and rob him. So yeah, Cardi quote on. Yeah. Oh, she sent that. Well, Nikki's sending niggas to rob niggas on Molly's under, under the influence. So what is you saying? Like every single thing they try to do, it's like your faith is a walking contradiction. She's embarrassing. She embarrasses you. She embarrasses you guys all the time. Cardi does not do do us like that. Of course, people get in trouble. People go to jail. People, but yo, like that. This the level of fuckery in her life is so disgusting. Like you dealing with rape. You dealing with motherfucking. Uh, sex offender, uh, registry. When it comes to her, you 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 literally have all of these things connected to her, and these are kids who are fans of that. Kids that are sixteen, fifteen years old that could have been Jennifer Huff. You could have been Jennifer Huff. You know what I'm saying? But they they stand so hard until somebody steals their vagina. That's when everything is different. Okay, but they gonna stand though until somebody takes them in the corner and does things they're not supposed to do until somebody molests their little sister. Now they're gonna be in their feelings, but fuck y'all, nobody's gonna give a fuck. Um, and then so that's that. So robbing men while they are under the influence, sending niggas to do it at that. The same way they say Cardi sent bitch, you know, people to fight, sending niggas to rob. Um, talks about sniffing good blow cokeyo. She says she has a drug of choice. She said, look at her lyrics. You see heroin, you see coke, you see coke. She sniffs, she's saying she's sniffing on good blow, which is the coke. Um, several videos out there on YouTube where they basically were saying that she was sniffing coke. And then people, and then, you know, I think, um, yeah, a lot. And then she was saying it's allergies. And I, all I know is that you don't sniff allergies. You sneeze that out. You know what I'm saying? So that's pretty much what the videos are like circulating. And when you look at her lyrics, it tells she tells us what she does. You know what I'm saying? She raps according to her life. And she tells us what she does. And that's why a lot of these rappers go to jail. They're going to jail over their own lyrics because their lyrics are representations of them. They write and they tell you what's going on in their life. How she How she wrote about her abortion. How she talked about her abortion, she talks about her life. And this is what she does, according to her lyrics. So it's like, what what, what argument does do these barbs have? And um, I was going to bring something else up. Also, Cardi B pulled a great, great move management-wise. So Cardi B joins Irving and Jeffrey Azov's full stop management because Cardi's album is slated to come out like early next year, and I'm excited about it. Um, uh, she basically, when I saw him, I said, that man looked powerful as hell. He finna really go off of her. Like her album promotion is going to be a one elite. So, you know, the same way, you know, Nikki went ahead and got, you know, Cardi sloppy seconds, that call of duty, you know, Carla, you know, she was like, okay, that's fine. But I'm finna go for the best management, Irving and Jeffrey. And who have they managed? Let's see the receipts. The company is home to more than 40 management clients, including Harry Styles, that's legend, John Mayer, legendary, the Eagles, John Bon Jovi, bitch, John Bon Jovi, if you don't know who that is, that's a musical legend, he's a musical, he's like a Beethoven in music, Gwen Stefani, legendary, as well as Roddy Rich, Saweetie, and Daniel Caesar, okay, wow, he manages Sweetie too, so he manages a couple of people, and um, people were saying that, oh, and the barbers were just talking like, oh, she got Nikki Slop Sloppy Seconds, um, no, Irv manages people. That's what he does for a living. And Cardi B, it's okay for her to be under his roster. What sloppy seconds is the fact that management, yes, that's very common. You can get artists. You're supposed to get artists to manage. But a Call of Duty deal is specifically for that person. That that deal, Cardi had it. And because of her court situation, she couldn't do it. And what did Onika pressed, jealous, 
still in Cardi's face, Tanya Mirage do. She went and got the deal, you know, to be spiteful, like a sloppy ass number two ass bitch, because that's what she is. Fat photoshopped in number two. And so it's like now the Barb's, they do anything, like they do anything. They spin everything. They are delusional. These kids are meant. That's why I always call them mentally ill kids, because they're delusional. Like their parents don't love them. If their parents gave them enough hugs, they wouldn't depend on Nikki. They wouldn't be obsessed with Nikki so much. Usually when people are obsessed with celebrities, it's because they're not getting love at home. If your parents were hugging you, you wouldn't be obsessed over a stranger. You're weird. It's one thing to be a fan of the music and report on celebrity news and gossip, but it's another thing to be obsessed with somebody you don't know, who don't give a fuck about you, who don't care if you die tomorrow. Literally. That's how delusional they are. They think Nikki really cares about them, knows them, and she doesn't. She doesn't. If she don't care about assault victims and rape victims, what makes you what makes you think she's going to think about y'all stupid asses? Like, y'all kids ride the magic school bus, just dumb as fuck. I think this was a great move. Um, I heard that he's a Jew. The one thing about them Jews, bitch, don't play with they. They don't play about their business. They know how to calculate and account money very well, and they are very, very good when it comes to business. So I think this was a very smart move. And um, she wants um to be with somebody that's big like that, so that when her second album comes, she can really have the best, best rollout ever. And I feel like this second album is gonna be epic. Um, I feel like you know. Cardi basically has been working on it for long enough. And I feel like she's been through enough. You know, she has a lot to write about. So I know she wrote a lot. And I know that um, it's like she had time to really, really, you know, hone her craft. And, you know, okay, well, I don't like this. I don't like that. She had time to do it. She didn't just rush and put something together. It takes time to create a classic art. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how she got best rap album for the Grammys. So, like, she took her time, and I'm very happy. Like, I think that her album, um, it's basically going to be a great album because she literally took her time. She didn't let nobody rush her. Oh, she haven't come out with an album yet? No, because she don't want to be like Nicki Minaj coming out with six albums and get Grammys for none. She doesn't want to be embarrassed like that. You rushing to put these bullshit projects together and the Grammys see it as bullshit and you don't win anything. Cardi got her Grammy because her, her album was a body of work. It was classic. She got best rap album for a reason. Do you know who's in the best rap album history winners? I went over that the other day. Like you got people like Eminem, Kanye West, Nas, those people got best rap album. You cannot easily get that. Invasion of Privacy was a classic. Nicki has never made a classic album. I for, I forgot. I like I said all the time, if I can't remember your first single, it wasn't classic. Cause I remember everything. If the music is amazing, how it's supposed to be, if it's not a gimmicky, if it's not childish and and stupid and bubblegum and Sesame Street, people are gonna remember hip hop and rap. And I don't remember shit. From Pink, Friday, from Pink Friday, and the records on Pink Friday versus Cardi's records, it's like, bro, Cardi eats that bitch up. Like, these nursery rhyme ass, you know, Sesame Street character, little 12-year-old in a 40-year-old body behavior that she does, that's not hip-hop. What she be doing, that pop shit, that's not hip-hop, okay? Cardi really be rapping, you know? Little Kim, hip-hop, they be rapping. Glorilla, they be rapping. Meg Thee Stallion, they be rapping. Lotto, they be rapping. Even the city girls, they be rapping. Like, they not over here doing super bass and motherfucking um, uh, starships. Biggie and, and, and Tupac would fucking roll in their grave. And I know they did. You know what I'm saying? But anywho, y'all, I just wanted to show y'all, number one, how people on Twitter, they don't play no games. They basically, they dig up the receipts, honey. Like, literally, this girl talks about taking advantage of a man under the influence and sending his, her niggas to rob him. She talks about heroin, mollies, and, and coke, and sniffing on coke, good blow, which is street terminology in her lyrics. Like, you see who she is, like, and she said, go to her lyrics to find out things about her, you know? So it's like, you know, that lady... It's sticking ahead, and the re and she's so twisted. Her fans are twisted as well. Like I said, do the Navy act like this? No. Do the Beehive act like this? No. Do all these other celebrities, Taylor Swift, all these other people, do they have a, a following like the Barb's? Do they, do they have sick ass kids like that? No. They got regular fans. You know what I'm saying? They don't have a cult. There's a difference. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like 
they should be embarrassed about themselves and ashamed. Like, if I was ever them, I would look at myself and be disgusted, like, ill. Like, embarrassed. Like, they're a bunch of germs. They're, like, strep throat, a cough, a flu, coronavirus. Like, all these kids, they're just fucking embarrassing. Like, I would never want a barb to represent me. But Nikki is a barb. Nikki is, you know, a fool, a clown. You know, she's literally, like... She's literally a reflection of her fans, and her fans are a reflection of her. They belong together, how her and her husband belong together. She defended her molester, pedophilic um, brother, and, she, uh, and you know, so it's no surprise she would have a baby by um, somebody that was co uh, convicted of, um, uh, was convicted and has a battery on his leg, like match made in heaven, you know? It's like her fans and her are the same, nasty as fuck, disgusting as fuck. And, you know, the people that are that are around her husband, her brother's the same. Nasty as fuck, disgusting as fuck. So it's like we, the people that are normal in the in the brain, that know better than to make a baby father, our child's father, a sex offender. We know better than to make our child's father um, a, a sex offender, our child's father. We know better than that. But, but Nikki has no morals and her fans don't either. So it's like, what do you expect from a moralist, wicked, evil person? Evil, you know? evil and that's why she got dubbed and that's why she got embarrassed when the grammy nominations came because god does not reward evil so before y'all open up y'all stank hot ass breaths to talk about cardi look at your girl and what she be rapping about drug on, drugs on top of drugs high as a kite is literally the name of the single and this bitch is definitely talking about taking advantage of niggas and having niggas rob them sending bitches just how y'all say cardi sent bitch she sends too according to her lyrics okay and and people and get incriminated by their lyrics and go to jail because they are literally telling their life. That's what rap is about. Hip hop is about storytelling. Tell your truth, okay? So basically, these rappers they go on and they talking or whatever, and the prosecutors they're like, yeah, she, that this was said, this was said, this was said. This is who they are. This is their artist, and that's this is their art. This is what they do. This is what they're writing and they're writing about their lives, and that's how by law these rappers get sent to jail with their own lyrics and that's exactly why she sued nosy ho and didn't even serve her yet because the, the 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 internet was so quick to show like bitch you said this you said that you said coke da 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 she the, that shit is dead and quiet why because what case does she have like she's gonna make a fool out of herself she's obsessed with cardi she wanted to file a lawsuit just like cardi because she's obsessed she wants to do everything cardi do Cardi get married, she goes and tries to get married, but to a sex offender, dummy. Cardi has a baby, all of a sudden she want to have a baby. Cardi got her, and Cardi, you know, um, it, all of a sudden now she wants to do makeup like Cardi, get the full Angelina Jolie lips like Cardi. She wants to look like her. And she definitely accomplished that by that, you know, um, the look, the makeup look that she took to her um, <laughs> stylist or whatever the case may be and said, hey, make me look like this bitch. Yeah. The bitch that's running the game right now make me look like her. The same way she stole Kim's identity is what she's doing to Cardi. So now we're going to have Nicki Minaj walking around looking like Cardi, wearing her clothes, doing her makeup like her, just like how she did Kim. And it's sad. Identity crisis. Don't even know who she is. And she's 40 years old. She's 65. Was with Jesus Christ himself when he walked the earth. I mean, walked the earth with a his, the most historic man ever and still don't know who she is after being a century old. You know? But anywho, guys, um, that's what I wanted to share. Her management, I think, was a big move. Like, she's going to have a big, big, big promoting rollout, a good rollout. Two, yo, y'all are embarrassing. <laughs> Everything y'all basically talking about, Cardi, your fave, like, literally is a hypocrite and is literally exposing herself in her music. And it's like, what could you say about Cardi? That's all they try to come with. Okay, well, you can't come for that no more because guess what? Your fave, definitely, whatever you claim and Cardi did, she do it too, according to her lyrics. And clear, 